Hello there, Reena here from digitalaccesspass.com and today I'm so excited to introduce to you a completely revamped DAP Manage Members page. So everything that you see under the Members menu, Manage, Add, Import, Custom Fields, everything has changed. Uh, primarily the look and feel, but also we have added a few uh, new features in the Manage Members page which will make it uh, easy for you to find uh, member details and uh, other things that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Uh, but uh, the other thing that has also changed is you will notice that there is a new header. Uh, the menu looks different uh, because we have replaced the old one uh, where we used to have like an orange uh, header. We have replaced that with a new modern uh, header and I hope you like this uh, new header. And uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at all the updates that we have made to all of these uh, member pages. So let's go ahead and start with the Manage Members page. Now this is the page where you can find all of your member details. Uh, the list of all of your members, the products that they have, their access details, uh, access start, access end, uh, whether their access is active to the product or not, when did they last log in, all of this information is all available in the Manage Members page. So we have tried to make it uh, more user friendly and you'll be able to find all the information that you're looking for uh, in the Members page a lot more easily uh, going forward. So. Here are the updates that we have made. We have added a new search feature and this is pretty cool and different from the search option that you find here. Now the reason for that is you can enter any search string, anything that you're looking for in the user data, you can enter it here. And uh, as long as uh, any of the rows in the user database, if it contains that string that you enter here, it's going to show you that in the results here. So it's going to narrow down the search as long as there is a match. For example, say that you're looking for the word test, and as long as any of the user rows contain uh, the word test in it, it's going to show up here. So it's going to narrow down based on this string. So here you can see that in the name that is the word test, in the email that is the word test. So if it's in the name, email, or any one of these fields, it's going to narrow down the search and it's going to show you all the rows that has this uh, string. Also, you will notice the pagination has changed. So before we just had a previous and next, but now if you want to uh, skip a few pages or if you want to go directly to the last page, it's much easier to do that now uh, with this new numbered uh, pagination. You will also find a total number of rows returned. Uh, now this will show you the total number of users that are there in your database. Now before it was based on the pagination. So if you had restricted the total number of rows uh, per page to be like 10, then the total number of rows returned was showing 10 and wasn't really useful because it wasn't telling you exactly how many users you have in your database. But now we have changed it, so the total number of rows returned will show you overall how many uh, users you have in your database. We have also simplified bulk action. What I mean by that is say that if you want to give users access to a specific product or remove their access uh, from a specific product or delete a bunch of users from the database, then these are all going to be under the bulk action dropdown. So all you have to do is select the user records and then select the action. So for example, say that I want to select these two users and I want to give these two users access to a specific product. And then all I have to do is select the product and then click on apply and it's automatically going to give these two users access to that product and you're going to see that here. Or say that if you want to delete users access to a specific product, so you can even do this in bulk. So say that these are the two users and you want to remove their access to a specific product, then just select the user records and then select the product from which you want to remove their access and then just click on apply and uh, it's going to automatically remove their access to that product. And if you want to completely delete a specific user or a bunch of users, then just select those users, click on delete, and then apply, and the users are going to be completely deleted uh, from the database. So when you're doing a remove, it's not going to completely delete the user, it's just going to remove their access to that specific product. So if the user has access to other product, it's going to still be there, and the user account will not be deleted when you do a remove access. So if you want to completely delete a user, then you should select delete user option. Now when you do a delete user, then you're not going to be able to recover the user because the user is going to be completely deleted from the database. And also in this release, we have added a couple of awesome security features. One, in the DAP Manage Members page, you will now see an option that says list all admin users. So click on that and it will show you all the admin users in DAP. And if anything looks suspicious, if you find an account that shouldn't be there, or if you find an email that shouldn't be there, but it's there, you can get rid of it. You can select the user and completely delete the user account from DAP. 
and also uh, we have added an automatic uh, email alert so what will happen is if DAP notices that a new admin account has been added or an admin account was updated you're going to automatically receive an email it will get sent to you and the email will get sent to whatever email you have set up in the setup config page and in that email you will find a list of all the admin users and uh, the admin users that were added newly so if you find anything suspicious there uh, you can take immediate action. You can come back to the App Manage Members page, click on List All Admin Users, and see if you're finding any suspicious accounts there and get rid of it and immediately contact your web hosting provider to let them know that uh, uh, something is going on on your server and they can run a security check. So this way you will be able to immediately detect uh, if something is uh, not looking right on your server. There's also another search option here. Uh, if you're looking for a specific email or if you want to search by last name, first name, user ID number, or if you know the user's PayPal email and you want to find their main DAP account, uh, you can enter the PayPal, you can select search by PayPal email, enter their PayPal email and uh, click on find and it will find the user account where the PayPal email matches whatever text you enter here. And it doesn't even have to be full email address. If you don't know the full address, you can just enter partial text and wherever you find is a match. Uh, in the PayPal email field, it will uh, show you all of those user accounts here. So there is also an advanced search option if you want to uh, search for additional stuff. So basic search is what you see when you land on the Manage Members page. So as I showed you, you can search by all of these fields. There's also a generic search here. But in addition to that, there is also an advanced search option. So if you go to the advanced search uh, link here, you will see all the options here. So here you can do several things. For example, you can select the products and you can say only show me the users that have access to these products, one or more of these products. Or you can say only show the users that do not have access to one or more of these products. Or you can select based on the expiration dates or based on their access date, start and end date, or their statuses, or even based on the email opt-in status. So there's a lot more option here in the advanced tab. Now let's take a look at all the fields in the manage members page and what these fields mean. The ID number is the user account ID number. It's going to be unique for every unique email in your user's database. And uh, as long as the email is the same, if they purchase different products using the same email address, the ID number is going to remain the same. So they can use the same login credentials to log into their membership and access all of their products. Uh, as long as they use the same email to make the purchases of those other products. Name is the user's uh, first and last name. Email address is the email address they use to sign up uh, either to your free product or your paid products. The email they use to make the purchase, this is their primary email and this is their login email. So this is the email uh, they'll have to use when they want to log into your membership. User status is the account status. So this is uh, if the user has say multiple products uh, then this status will apply to all of those products. Status of A indicates active status. Status of I indicates inactive. Status of L indicates locked. And if you want to update the user status from active to inactive, you can just click on it once and it will become inactive automatically. So these users will be able to log in, but they cannot access the product because the account level status is inactive. And uh, if you want to lock the user so that uh, they cannot even log in, in that case, you can uh, click on this little editor icon. It will take you to the edit member page. And on that page, you can update the status to locked. So you will find it here, right here, and uh, you can change the status to locked. Now, pre-registration status, it's used by our shopping cart platform, SmartPayCart. And if a user is uh, trying to make a purchase but didn't complete the purchase and they abandon, then they are still going to be registered, but the status will be marked as P, uh, which is for pre-registered. And uh, this way you will know that they were there on your website, they were trying to make a purchase, but they didn't complete the purchase. So in case you want to reach out to them, you will have their contact uh, details. So user status is generally set to A when a user registers to a new product, unless it's a double opt-in product. So generally, uh, your paid product is not going to be double opt-in because you would want to give them access right away as soon as they make the purchase. So generally, you won't make your paid products double opt-in. But if it's a free product and say that uh, you have set it to be a double opt-in product uh, when you created the product in DAP. Uh, in that case, when a user registers to that free product, initially, their user status will be set to U, which is unconfirmed, and product status will be set to I, which indicates inactive. So the user status will automatically change to A when the users complete the opt-in process. So they are going to receive an email with the opt-in confirmation link, and when they click on the confirmation link, uh, then the activation will complete 
and the user status will then become A and the product status will then change to A and that way they can access the product to which they signed up for. Say that a user has access to two products and uh, their access to one of the products is active and another product is inactive. They can access the product to which their status is active but they cannot access the product to which their status is set to uh, inactive because the product status is at product level. Opted out indicates their uh, email opt-in opt-out status. So if they have opted out of receiving any emails from you, then opted out will be set to yes. And if they have not opted out, it will be set to no. And this is at account level, it's not at product level. So if they opt out, uh, they will be opted out of all emails. So they will not receive any emails that you send out. And uh, if they have opted in, they will receive all the emails that you send out from DAP. Now say that they have opted out uh, of emails uh, from DAP, but uh, you have connected DAP to your email autoresponder service like say Aweber, and then you're still sending them emails from Aweber, that's fine, they will still receive the email unless they opt out directly from the Aweber uh, email list. So this opted out uh, status only applies uh, to their ability to receive emails uh, from DAP. So the last login indicates uh, the last time they logged in uh, to your membership site. And uh, for more login details, you can Click on this little editor icon. It will take you to the edit member page and you will find the entire login history of that user. So here, currently there is no login history, but if there was, you're going to find all the login information, how many times they logged in, when they logged in, the date, uh, all of that uh, right here. Product name indicates the product uh, that the users have access to. So if the user has access to multiple products, it will show up multiple times here uh, because the ID will be the same, the email will be the same, but the same user, same account has access to multiple products. So you will find multiple rows here uh, for that user. And access dates are the access start and the end date of that user to that product. Access date indicates when they signed up to access the product and access end date uh, indicates how long they have access to that product. If it's a one-off product, then their access, generally it will be forever, uh, unless in the products page, you have set different uh, rules for that uh, product. So you can specify how many days of access users should get uh, when they sign up to a product. So say that it's a recurring subscription product and it's a 30 day cycle, it's a 30 day uh, recurring uh, subscription cycle. Then when they sign up, they are only going to get 30 days access. So if you visit the manage members page after they purchase your uh, subscription, you will see that the access start date will be set to the current date. Access end date will be depending on uh, the recurring cycle. If it's a 30 day cycle, it will be set to 30 days from the day they signed up. And uh, when the recurring subscription payment comes in every once every month, once every 30 days, that's when their access will be extended. So they are only given access uh, to a specific amount of time. And when the next payment comes in, that's when their access is extended and uh, that goes on until the payment keeps coming in, access will be extended, payment stops, access stops, and they will automatically lose access. Now, whether it's a free product, whether it's a paid product, whether it's a recurring subscription product, you can specify how many days of access users are going to get. And so, for example, if it's a free product, you can specify the access duration here. So if you say they only get access to 365 days, then uh, access start date will be set to today, access end date, to when they sign up will be set to 365 days from the date of their sign up. And uh, similarly for paid product, say it's a one-off product and you only want to give them access for say 30 days after they signed up and you can do that. So when they sign up, uh, their access start date will be set to current date, access end date will be set to 30 days from today. And uh, similarly for recurring uh, subscription products, you can specify the recurring cycle. So if it's a 30 day cycle, for example, Say that you have a seven day trial followed by 30 day cycle. In that case, your users are first going to receive just seven days of access when they sign up. And then after every payment, after every subscription payment, their access will automatically be extended by 30 days. Now the operations, these are at user product level. So say that you want to update the access start date or the end date, you can just click on the date right here and you can update the start date or the end date that way or you can click on this little editor icon and you can update it that way. And if you want to delete a user's access to a specific product, you can click on this little trash icon here to remove the user's access to that specific product. And if you want to resend the welcome email or the double opt-in email, then you can click on that uh, email icon and you can select the type of email you want to send and you can resend the email. And uh, if you want to add an order manually, so say that you want to manually give a user access to a product and uh, you want to manually add an order uh, in DAP because you already received the payment uh, in a different way that was not registered in DAP, 
then you can click on this dollar icon here, add the order amount and add an order uh, transaction order that way. And the order ID is going to be set to free if a user signs up to a free product and uh, it's going to point to the actual order if they uh, actually make a purchase. If you manually add a user and give them access, then it's going to be marked as paid for a paid product. So for example, if you go to members add page uh, and you're manually adding the user, or you go to members import page and you're importing users, in that case, it will be set to paid. But if a user has actually completed a purchase successfully uh, and there is an order registered in the system, then it's going to point to the actual order of that user. So it will be a hyperlink here with the order ID number click on the order ID number and it will take you to the order details page where you will find all the details of that order. Affiliate ID, if a user, if you're using the RAP affiliate system and uh, if the user was referred by an affiliate, instead of the plus icon here, you will notice the affiliate ID of the user will be here. And uh, if this user wasn't referred by any affiliate, it will show up as plus. Also, when a user purchases a product, uh, even if the user was referred by an affiliate, uh, it's not going to right away change uh, to the affiliate ID. You will only notice the affiliate connection when a user actually logs in to their membership. So if you use a software like say Smart Pay Cart, uh, which is our shopping cart platform for DAP, then it will automatically log in the users after they complete the purchase. So right away, uh, the affiliate ID will be registered here if they were referred by an affiliate and if they clicked on an affiliate link uh, before they made the purchase. If not, if they were not logged in automatically, then when they log in manually, that's when the affiliate connection is made and the plus will change to the affiliate ID of the affiliate uh, that referred them. And this connection will only be made if they actually clicked on an affiliate link. So it doesn't matter when they clicked on the link and uh, because as long as they click the link, the affiliate cookie is set and it doesn't matter when they purchase after that, but as long as they have clicked on an affiliate link prior to making the purchase and they make the purchase after that, then uh, the affiliate association will be made. Also the affiliate commissions is only assigned when the DAP cron job runs. So say that a user completes purchase at 1.30 uh, p.m. Then when the cron job runs at the top of the hour at two o'clock, uh, that's when the commission will be assigned to that affiliate. And the coupon ID field that you see here, if a user uh, uses a coupon to make the purchase, you will notice the coupon ID uh, of the coupon they used and it'll be a hyperlink. You can click on that to find more details about the coupon. You will also notice that we have a sort option. So you can easily sort by fields. For example, if you sort by ID, if you want to sort by name, email, or the product name or access dates, you can do that just by uh, clicking on this little sort icon. It will sort by that field. So that's pretty much it when it comes to manage members. And uh, if you want to manually assign an affiliate to a user, you can click on the plus and then enter the affiliate ID of the affiliate in the pop-up and assign it that way. So I have covered everything related to the manage members in this video. And uh, there are other options. For example, if you want to add a member, you can go to the add member page by clicking on this or through the members uh, add option in the menu or custom field. If you want to add a custom field, you can click on this or again, uh, go to members, custom fields and access it that way. If you want to import multiple users, uh, then click on import members. To export users, you can click on export members and then uh, you can select your search criteria here and then you can click on export to CSV to export those users. And uh, that's it, that's pretty much it. And I'm going to have different videos where I will show you how the add member works or custom fields work. Uh, or how you can import members because uh, otherwise this video will become too long. So if you have additional questions about say how to import members, you can go to the import members page and uh, you will find a link to the video right here. We will add it right here. So you will be able to access the video right there uh, and it will have more details on how you can import members. All right, so I hope this uh, answers all of your questions related to manage members and how it works. My name is Veena Prashant. Thanks for watching.